Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I've been a photographer and photography educator for some 40 years and I'd like to talk to you about colour control for photographers. This is all about mastering our craft and a lot of people do get into a little bit of trouble uh, controlling the colour from capture through to output. Now there are some great tools around and so uh, I'm going to be looking at these from data color. Now you'll see that um, in this uh, Capture Pro uh, kit here we have the Spider Checker, we have the Spider X Elite, this is for calibrating and profiling our monitors. We have the Spider Cube, which is great to take onto location for creating custom white balances. And we also have the Spider Lens Cal there. So you can buy these products individually, but I'll be looking at all of the products in this particular kit. Now, first off, as photographers, we must be able to trust in our, in our colors if we uh, have any sort of degree of pride over the craft of photography. So we're gonna start by looking at uh, the Spider X Elite. This is the monitor calibrator. If you only ever do one thing for color control, it should be this one. Now, uh, I would also encourage you to invest in a good quality monitor. Uh, there is uh, um, there's always going to be a little bit of a problem if you're using a low grade desktop monitor or laptop screen. Now, if you are using a laptop, you can buy an external monitor for that, a, a much higher quality uh, desktop monitor and get much better uh, color rendition from that desktop monitor. Now, the my own personal monitor is a better Q monitor. There are also other companies such as Asa who make excellent quality um, monitors for photographers. What I would encourage you to do is to choose a monitor with a larger color gamut uh, and typically the ones we're looking for are the ones that can achieve uh, Adobe RGB. Some will quote that they can uh, achieve 98 or 99 percent of the Adobe RGB color gamut. Now most monitors can only hit the smaller S sRGB color gamut and that is a little bit of a problem if we can't see detail in the rich colors that our cameras are capable of capturing. I would also encourage you as a photographer to invest in, in the higher resolution 4K monitors. There doesn't seem to be a lot of point in using a high resolution camera when we can't see much of that resolution by using a low resolution such as a 2.5K or even just a HD monitor. You should possibly consider a, a monitor that enables high dynamic range if you're capturing movies in high dynamic range such as the latest Sony cameras. Uh, hardware calibration is another positive point. This is where the profile sits on the hardware, the monitor itself, rather than on your computer. So this makes the, uh, the, the profile available for multiple computers. Uh, a shading hood is also very useful if your studio or your office area is slightly compromised by stray light striking the surface of that monitor. And I'd also encourage you to maybe consider a monitor that doesn't have a high gloss screen because reflections can become a little bit problematic if you can't lower the lights in your studio office enough. Now the BenQ SW321 that I use is a color accurate monitor. It has all of those features and it comes pretty much out of the box um, in a good um, uh, calibrated state. But we obviously need a monitor calibrator or profile to keep um, that monitor uh, working very accurately over a period of time. And so that's what we're going to look at now. An important thing to do in your working area is to prepare your room. It shouldn't be like the one in the illustration. You shouldn't have your monitor facing a window. You should be able to uh, dim the room illumination sufficiently so the monitor is the brightest thing in the room. And obviously if you're not work, working with a high gloss monitor screen, uh, then you're not gonna be reflecting any brightly colored clothes into that monitor surface, which will affect the way you adjust your images. So once you've got your room set up, what I would then invite you to do is not to start editing your images prior to uh, calibration and profiling. If you're looking at an image and you're thinking the, uh, the skin tones are just a little bit off, you have to ask yourself the question, is it the image that's off or is it your monitor that's off? 
because if your monitor hasn't yet been calibrated or profiled you could find that you're just wasting your time by putting the further uh, the image even further out of a, a correct uh, editing um, uh, appearance. So once you have calibrated and profiled, you can then look at that same image and know if you need to tweak um, the, the colors uh, to get the best possible skin tones. So you're basically editing from a position of trust and that's what this is all about, being able to trust accurate colors uh, that your camera has captured and that is now being displayed on your profiled monitor. Now this Spider X Elite uh, will obviously be placed onto the surface of the monitor and the way it does that profiling and calibration is the accompanying software that you will download will uh, guide you as to the step-by-step -step workflow to get the best possible color profile and calibration for that monitor. Now if we take a look at the, uh, the, the calibration device itself you'll see that it has uh, a, a hood that uh, protects the lens which is the measuring element of here. Now that hood will slide down um, the cord, the power, the USB cord and uh, allow you to um, uh, use that as a counterweight. Um, the counterweight will go behind the monitor and so the, uh, the calibration profiling device doesn't slip down the monitor during the profiling procedure. So it's a very well thought out and accurate device. Now when you've uh, purchased your products you will be able to go up to the data color website to download the accompanying software and that periodically gets updated as the operating systems for Windows or Mac uh, gets updated as well. You'll also find uh, access to the step-by-step uh, uh, -step user guides for this if this movie isn't quite enough uh, information for you. Now you'll just uh, go through the step-by-step -step workflow which is to open and register your Spider X Elite software. You'll choose to calibrate my displays. You'll choose your backlight option. Now there will be uh, recommendations about what sort of backlight you're using on your monitor. Mine is a wide LED because it has that broader Adobe RGB. If you're working with a standard sRGB it'll just be the standard LED. LED and then you'll simply choose the step-by-step -step assistant. Now you will be given some choices here and unless anybody guides you to something very different I would just choose a gamma 2.2 that is the recommended gamma. I would choose a recommended white point of 6500 uh, Kelvin and choose a brightness value of approximately 160 to 180. Now as I said the data color spider X will guide you um, to the uh, room illumination and then give you a recommended bright for that monitor. Now if you are um, uh, preparing images solely for print you'll find a lot of print service providers will recommend that you maybe choose a much lower uh, level of illumination such as 120. Now this will come up as the recommended illumination but if you're primarily preparing images for the web I would actually recommend that you raise the brightness of that monitor to somewhere between 160 and 180. You'll then uh, click to proceed and you'll be invited to place your monitor calibrator uh, over the designated space uh, on the accompanying software. The, uh, it will go through a measuring of the room illumination and then give you a recommended uh, brightness value uh, to put the monitor in. You can ignore that and adjust your room brightness or go with the recommended uh, illumination. You will then um, um, uh, adjust your monitor illumination so it hits the target uh, as recommended by the software. So there is just a little bit of um, updating involved there. You will adjust uh, either the monitor brightness or the room illumination and click update until you've got that accuracy that you're looking for. You will then proceed and uh, basically a whole series of colors will be shown uh, towards uh, the monitor calibration device. This is where the profiling comes in. This is where the color accuracy is um, 
put into that profile. So if your monitor displays red slightly magenta or your orange is slightly red, then those will be adjusted on the fly by your Adobe software. So your monitor won't have any unique characteristics anymore. It'll basically be adjusted so it is an accurate display of color. Now, if you're not using the, um, the uh, data color software, you can, uh, and this is often the case if you're using, say, an Azo or BenQ color accurate monitor with hardware profiling, uh, in order for the profile to sit on the monitor itself rather than the computer, you will be invited to use, uh, as in the case with the BenQ color accurate monitors, their own software co called Palette Master. Uh, it will still pick up the um, the Spider X uh, calibration device, and you will just go and create a hardware profiling um, calibration instead of using the uh, the Spider X Elite software. If you do find yourself getting an error message, i.e. the Palette Master software can't find the SpiderX, just make sure that you're not uh, connecting your SpiderX through a USB hub. Uh, you shouldn't be mirroring screens if you're working um, with a laptop connected to your desktop monitor. Uh, just make sure you've updated um, uh, the software, the Palette Master software, and uh, also uh, make sure you've closed any other software which could interfere with Palette Master picking up the Spider X. Okay, so uh, everything should be good. If all else fails, just use the Spider X software. So then we'll have a uh, before and after, and after the calibration and profiling procedure, it'll show you um, how inaccurate your monitor was before the profiling device. So as soon as we uh, uh, look at the after version, you'll be pleasantly surprised that you are now actually getting uh, colors that you can actually trust. And as I said before, if you only ever do one thing in the color management process, it should be this one. Let's um, go back to the capture itself, okay? Uh, because color actually starts with the camera, not with the monitor. Now, there are some controls on the camera, um, some adjustments we can make to control color on the camera itself. Now, things like white balance, the color gamut, uh, um, and uh, saturation can be controlled in the, uh, the firmware of the camera. Um, but these are only actually get applied to JPEGs and movies. They don't get applied to the raw images if you are a photographer that uses the raw, raw file format. But what uh, is um, um, uh, flows through to the raw file is the color characteristics of the sensor inside your camera. Just like uh, every monitor has its own unique color characteristics, so does the sensor in your camera. And we really should um, uh, measure those. And there is a measurement device in that um, in that Spider uh, X um, uh, kit there that we can actually measure the color characteristics of that camera. First, we'll look at the first thread because if you are a JPEG shooter, you do want to pay attention to your white balance. Now, you may be using a white balance reference, uh, such as the ones uh, that um, uh, Data Color uh, make and are included on the back of the color swatches here. They are um, uh, made from uh, materials that will get damaged if uh, they're left out in the rain. So I actually don't recommend these are taken out on location which is really where the spider cube comes into its own. It is made of durable materials, it is weatherproof, and it, it does uh, capture much more information than just a white balance reference by itself. For instance, if we take a look at this diagram, we also measure the specular highlights on that little um, metal chrome ball on the top. We can work out which um, where, um, is the direction of the light source, because when we take that white balance, it should be on the brighter of the gray surfaces, so facing towards the, the light source itself. We also uh, capture information about the shadows and highlights. 
this uh, uh, makes us uh, um, uh, avoid uh, clipping highlight information and we also have a black trap there so when we take that image that we've captured that test image into um, Lightroom we can actually look for the clipping of the specular highlights and that is okay here uh, that's the red arrow we can also look at the black trap and it's okay if that clips as well because it's the absence of a surface and so in the old answer Adam zone system that would be expected to clip. We can take a white balance reference if we didn't create a custom white balance on location from the lighter of those gray surfaces facing towards the light source and we can ensure that we're not clipping either the shadow reference or the highlight reference. So a lot of information is captured um, by that spider X cube so it's definitely worth taking out onto location if we want to maximize uh, the detail that we capture. Now we do have the option uh, for capturing white balance in camera. This is more critical if you're a JPEG shooter or if you're shooting movies. Now most modern cameras we often have choices of white balance such as on my Sony cameras we have auto white balance standard ambient and white and that's really how the camera deals with light sources that become warmer such as in tungsten lighting do we want to create neutral tones as the light source warms up or do we want to reference that uh, warmer light source and create warmer looking images so you should think about those choices of your auto white balance even if you're a raw shooter and with any of these cameras typically we can fine tune the auto white balance uh, actually in camera so if you think your auto white balance leaves a slightly green tint you can correct that by creating a custom auto white balance setting so we can also choose auto white balance presets if you don't trust um, uh, your um, uh, your auto white balance especially important when creating movies we typically either want to create a custom white balance or use a, a fixed white balance so the white balance doesn't uh, deviate or move as we film a, an individual clip for instance if a woman with a red dress comes in front of camera the white balance will shift um, because it thinks the whole scene has become excessive warm so the whole image will appear cooler which obviously isn't the case because the color temperature of the light source hasn't changed so I would if you do have time recommend creating a custom white balance and we can do that off the spider cube there we also have control over saturation by going into the creative styles on my Sony cameras and when we can increase or lower saturation accordingly to taste um, we also in those creative styles also have the opportunity to do a little bit of creative pre visualization for instance if you know you're producing black and white images then uh, you you could possibly be invited to create a black and white creative style so we can pre visualize the scene the color scene that we're capturing actually in black and white next we have color space this is the range of colors that is uh, that we're capturing now sRGB is the default of most cameras but it is quite a small color gamut as we can see over on the diagram on the right the Adobe RGB color gamut is much larger and can contain richer colors with full detail if we get uh, very saturated colors in sRGB we might see a saturated color but without any surface texture now if you do choose to move up to the larger Adobe RGB color gamut just recognize that uh, cheap and cheerful high street printers tend to uh, move towards the lowest common denominator which is sRGB and if we're uploading images for social media um, if uh, an image is untagged with a profile it will assume it's sRGB not Adobe RGB so you have to do a little bit of homework if you are going to increase uh, up to that larger Adobe RGB color gamut here's another diagram showing you how much larger the Adobe RGB color gamut is and this is why I do recommend um, choosing a, a monitor 
a desktop monitor that does have that larger Adobe RGB um, color space. Because if you're a raw shooter, um, the uh, the capabilities of your sensor uh, are actually exceeding Adobe RGB. So to work with a very small gamut sRGB, you're certainly not getting the best color renditions or capabilities uh, from your camera. If we look at um, a typical printer profile in color here, you'll see it actually exceeds the sRGB color gamut, especially in those uh, saturated reds and greens. Uh, but if we do move up to that larger Adobe RGB, the ability for us to print much richer colors with full detail increases enormously. We just need to then track down, maybe if you're not printing yourself, track down a specialized printer that does work to those larger color gamuts. Okay, so let's take a look at the color characteristics. And this is important for RAW shooters, not just JPEG shooters. And that is, uh, you'll probably hear um, a lot of discussions in online forums about color science. Some people saying they prefer the colors of their Canon cameras to, to Nikon cameras or Sony cameras. I have to point out there is no science in the term color science that Canon coined um, because these uh, each manufacturer just has a flavor of color they don't actually guarantee that they're producing accurate color and so you might actually prefer the color rendition of one manufacturer's cameras over another but that doesn't mean to say it's accurate color and if you actually um, uh, uh, measured uh, the color characteristics of each, each of these cameras with uh, um, data color spider checker you could create presets for each camera that created colors that appeared pretty much identical between each of the manufacturers so this whole argument and and maybe that leads some people to choose different cameras uh, is is basically uh, leading you down a path that serves no purpose because what you should be looking at is color management, not color science. And color management is what we're doing now with these data color products. It's basically measuring the inaccuracies of certain devices and then creating presets and profiles so that we can maintain uh, accurate color over the entire workflow from capture to output. So what we're looking at here is uh, the spider color checker. This is uh, um, 48 color swatches of known values that can be measured to see how inaccurate our cameras actually are. Now, Spider Checker does make a 24 patch um, uh, checker as well. Now, obviously, if you're trying to save a little bit of money, that is one option, and you can use that to measure and create a preset for your camera. But I would encourage you, if your color is very, very important to you, to go for that larger 48 patch color target. It comes in a durable case uh, so when closed it isn't going to fade because it's left out in the sun. It does have a mount for both a tripod and also the spider cube on top. Uh, if we put the spider cube on top it ensures that we're getting even illumination across the spider checker when we capture this test image and that is important. We also need to uh, ensure that we're square on to the target when we're capturing this target. So just make sure the verticals are vertical and you're square onto the target when you take that test image. We're then going to take that test image. Now shoot quite wide on the test image and then we're going to crop in inside of Lightroom. There are four white dots on the corners which uh, guide you uh, as to the crop the data color would like you to crop down to. And then you'll pick up your white balance reference eyedropper. Um, the, uh, there's a little arrow pointing to where that lives in the basic panel there. You'll bring it over to the E2 target, which I've identified there. And you'll simply click on that target to create the perfect white balance. Now, uh, you may have done this uh, in camera if you're shooting JPEG, but if you're a raw shooter using auto white balance, this is an important step. 
You'll then measure the brightness value of E1, which is the swatch above that, and it should measure 90%. Look at the figures just below the histogram and using the exposure slider to try to get that approximately 90% brightness. One more step is to go down to the lowest uh, target on that row, which is E6, and get it to a 4% brightness value using the black slider. Usually you'll have to drag that down to hit that 4% uh, average target luminance there. Once you've done that, um, you're now ready to create your preset. Basically, we've identified the colors and now the uh, spider checker software will create a preset to adjust the colors so they're perfectly accurate. We do need to, to go over to the preferences uh, of Lightroom external editing tab and check your additional external editor is set to file format TIFF, color space Adobe RGB, bit depth 16 bits. So in the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to choose Photo Edit In, Edit In Spider Checker App. Now just make sure the, the targets in the uh, software are roughly in the center of your targets that you've photographed. You can uh, go to the corners of those targets and just create a better alignment if they're slightly off. But if you've cropped reasonably accurate, you shouldn't really have to do much there. One final step is you do get a choice of mode um, in the software before creating your preset. You've got three choices. Color metric is the most accurate. Um, faithful to the color saturations as well as the hue of that particular color. Now you do have a couple of other options however you can choose portrait which creates uh, uh, colors of slightly lower saturation or saturation uh, mode which is colors of a slightly higher saturation. If in doubt you could just create one preset of all three options and then choose later. Now, once you've got that accuracy, you'll see after restarting Lightroom, you will need to restart Lightroom before Lightroom loads those presets that the, um, the Spider Checker software has created. And you'll see in the develop module, you'll see them appear in your user presets in the presets panel. If you were to click on that preset, then Lightroom will adjust the colors so they are now accurate. Basically, the hue, saturation, and luminance of each color will be fine-tuned so they're accurate to those color accurate swatches. So any, um, any um, mystery about are you looking at um, accurate colors will be completely removed because you've measured uh, the color accuracy of your camera and you're working with a color accurate monitor. Now, rather than having to click on that preset each and every time, what you can instruct Lightroom to do is basically um, bring in those files every time you import them from that camera and apply those presets every time. So this is where we're going to do that. Now you can just work with the individual preset. Here I've selected, um, I measured the target in daylight and with a particular Alpha 7C camera with a particular lens, just so I know where I create that target. Now I could just um, uh, load that one preset for all files coming in from that camera lens combination captured in daylight from now, but I can go a step further. For instance, if I constantly want to increase the sharpness from 40 to 75 and raise that masking slider, which is typically something that I always do in the detail panel in Lightroom, this avoids sharpening smooth surfaces so we don't get rough skin or uh, noise in smooth areas like sky etc. Um, if, if I want to do that as well as apply my um, spider preset then I can add that now. I can go to my lens corrections panel and, and apply the enable profile corrections which will take out any distortions that the lens might have. Uh, basically uh, Lightroom will see the lens that has been used by that camera. 
we can then go even a step further. For instance, one of the things that I typically do to most images that I'm editing is I lower the highlights, I raise the shadows and increase the contrast a little bit. And so I can do all of those um, uh, adjustments that I want to apply to every image coming into Lightroom now. What we're then going to do is create another preset. Go to that presets panel, click on the plus, hit create create preset. I'm going to call it my Alpha 7C um, uh, default preset. I'll click on check all and then I will create that preset. I am then going to go to my Lightroom preferences again. We're going to go to the presets tab. I'm going to go to camera settings and click on the checkbox override master settings for specific cameras choose my camera which is in this case my Alpha 7C and I'm going to choose the preset that I just created in the previous step and that's my A7C default preset. And so uh, I don't have to worry about um, are these uh, images coming into Lightroom going to be color accurate. It is applied on import. If you don't want to go that final step by making a default for your camera, you can, as in the import dialog, pick up that preset on import uh, each time that you're importing images. This does give you the option to apply a different preset. Uh, maybe you're using um, a, a preset for images captured in a studio environment instead of outdoor on location. So you could pick up alternative presets if you've got more than one for your camera. What I would do then is simply go to any image that may be in, already in your catalogue that was captured by this um, camera and then just hit reset. Instead of all of the sliders now going back to zero, they should go to um, the, the ones that you've created in that preset. So that's all of the, if you go to the, um, the HSL panel and look at the hue, saturation, luminance, they shouldn't all be zeroed out anymore. They should also all have those micro adjustments uh, or as many adjustments as were required to get each of those color swatches accurate. You will now have accurate color. Okay. One of the great workflow advantages about using um, Datacolor's Spider Checker over competing products is that we can create presets for movies as well. This is incredibly useful if you're capturing uh, scenes with maybe two or three different cameras and you don't want to have each camera with a slightly different color um, uh, uh, characteristic. So what you need to do is just capture a movie uh, of your spider checker and then bring that movie into Lightroom and in the library module when you've um, uh, gone into that movie just look for underneath the, uh, the movie there there will be a little click out option which uh, you can capture one frame from that movie and then you will use that frame to create a profile for movie capture on your particular camera. And as I said, if you've got more than one camera that you're capturing movies, create one for each camera. And then you'll be able to create a consistent color over multiple cameras. And this really is exceptionally useful for um, video capture. The final step, of course, is if you, um, uh, and, and Datacolor does make a product for this, is you can uh, create printer profiles. Uh, the Capture uh, Pro X kit that um, I'm using doesn't have this product, but this can be purchased separately. Or you can get your print service provider to create a profile for your specific printer. Um, it can be done remotely by just downloading a target from your print service provider and then you will basically print that out without any color management, send it back to the lab and they can send you back a profile for your particular printer, uh, ink, paper combination. And so uh, we then have complete and utter control. And this is the set, this is the nature of color management, not that color science that we discussed earlier, but proper color management. And then we have complete control over our color workflow right from capture to output. 
There is an additional pr uh, product in that um, uh, Capture X uh, kit there and it's not to really to do with color, it's to do with image sharpness. It's the Spider Lens Cal. Now um, I, I have to say that using a mirrorless camera this product isn't really required because the phase detect autofocus and the uh, uh, the contrast detect autofocus is directly on the sensor as itself so the focus has no ability to forward focus or back focus with DSLRs and uh, mirrorless cameras using adapters that have focus in the adapter then there is the ability for uh, the focus to be slightly forward or behind the point of focus and this is really where the lens count comes into its own because now we can fine tune that and in the Sony mirrorless cameras there is an opportunity to fine tune focus if we are using a lens adapter for instance, Sony's LAEA4 adapter has a focus motor inside the adapter. And so the focus is occurring not on the sensor anymore, it's occurring inside the lens adapter. And there is the opportunity for us to forward focus or back focus as a matter of course. Now, if we look at um, the, uh, the guide uh, for the spider lens cal, it shows you um, three um, illustrations here for um, uh, uh, front focus, back focus, and when we've corrected that focus. Now, I was sort of expecting my Sony LA EA4 adapter to be reasonably close, and I couldn't be more surprised because it wasn't a little bit out, it was a long way out, it was forward focusing by a long way, uh, not those incremental measures uh, just after zero, it was all of the way pushed out to two on that measurement scale. So I had to go into my um, Sony um, uh, menu system, look for the AF micro adjustment and use a positive number to push the focus back uh, to where it should be. Now the two A mount lenses that I hung on to after going mirrorless was a 135 1.8 which has very shallow depth of field at f1.8 so focus is very very critical if you want the focus to be on the eye and eyelashes and also my um, uh, 20 uh, sorry my 50 mil macro A mount lens and again for macro focus is very critical so I was surprised that I had to do uh, an AF adjustment um, on these lenses to get absolutely accurate focus. So the spider lens cal really came into its own in this particular instance. So I was glad that it was in that Capture X kit. And now you can see after having made that adjustment in the, the camera's uh, menu system, I am now getting pin accurate focus exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so hopefully you've um, found some useful information in this um, in this uh, video tutorial. You can ca catch up with me on my website. All of my learning resources from markgaylor.com are free to download. If you find any of them particularly useful, just consider making a small donation. Okay, so I, one of uh, many of the resources is I do create um, 400 page ebooks for specific models, uh, Sony uh, E-mount models. I also make a range of video tutorials that guide people through various aspects of the menu systems of Sony's. Okay so that's accurate color control using the Data Color Spider X Capture Pro kit there. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, I'll catch up with you next time.